when I spoke last time, I said there are two things that the Apostle Paul says that we are dead to. And we are dead to two things so that we can be alive to other things. And Paul is quite specific and I don't think you can even misread what he says. And yet one gets a feeling the church hasn't latched on to these things in the way that it needs to. The one dealing with sin comes from Romans 6, verses 10 and 11. And he likens it to what happened to our Lord, or what is happening to our Lord at this present time. The death Jesus died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. You know, it's stating the obvious, really. That's what happened to Jesus. He died once. It's past 2,000 years ago Jesus died. And he, Apostle Paul says he died to sin once. But now, the life he lives, in the present tense, he lives to God. That is what he is doing now. He is living to God. And that's an ongoing living. But notice what the Apostle Paul says next. He says in the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. And what the Apostle Paul is saying is saying in the same way that Christ died to sin once, past, but now lives to God, present continuous tense. In the same way, we are to see ourselves dead to sin once. When you became a Christian, you died to sin once. But now, you're alive to God in Christ Jesus there is far too much focus in the church on sin, which we should be dead to, and not enough focus on the life that we now have in Christ, in God. If you look at the church, if you think of your own lives, if you think of messages you've heard in churches, on the telly or across the media, how much focus is put on sin? So much focus. Well, how is that counting yourself dead to it? And yet the focus, the Apostle Paul says, should be on your state of being alive to God in Christ Jesus. I think the very thing that the Apostle Paul says we're dead to, we resurrect on a daily basis, And the very thing that the Apostle Paul says we should be alive to, we sort of kill somewhat. But the Apostle Paul, you know, do we take what he says? He had this tremendous revelation from God. He tells us he had this revealed to him by Christ. He didn't learn it from anyone else. It was revealed to him by our Lord Jesus Christ. And we get that from Galatians. And so, we are to consider ourselves. We know we make mistakes, and that's the barrier we have to cross. We know we still sin. But what the Apostle Paul says, and he uses the word, and the NIV uses the word count, other words will be consider, see yourself. It's like the Apostle Paul is saying, yeah, I know you make mistakes, but that's not the way you're to see yourself. You're to see yourself dead to sin, dead to the way of life. See yourself as alive to God in Christ Jesus. When you make a mistake, that's how you are to see yourself. I made a mistake, I move on. I'm alive to God in Christ Jesus. If you want the symbolism, look at baptism. You die to sin, you go into the water. You die to that old life. 
that you may be raised to a new life. We make mistakes. That's the problem. But we are to see ourselves alive. And in the same way that Paul talks about being dead to sin, he talks about being dead to the law. And we get this in Romans 7.4. So, my brothers, you also died to the law through the body of Christ. When Christ died, we died with him, and we died to the law with him. In order what? That we might belong to another, to him who was raised from the dead, in order that we might bear fruit to God. It's interesting if you sort of look at all this. Being dead to the law enables us to live and belong to another, to Christ, who was raised from the dead, in order that we might bear fruit for God. Now, if you take that analogy in a whole, it means that if you are law-minded, if you are conscious of the law, of commandments, of ritual of ceremony then you cannot bear fruit to God a law focused person cannot bear fruit to God it's impossible who were the biggest group of people that Jesus had trouble with they were the religious people And what was the one thing the religious people were big on? Law. But Paul says, you died to the law, that you may belong to another, that you may belong to him who was raised from the dead. And we go into verse 6, Romans 7. Paul writes this, but now by dying to what bound us we have been released from the law so that we serve in the new way of the spirit and not in the old way of the written code. Law binds people. A legalistic religious approach to Christianity will bind you. If you are law focused, if you are command focused, Ten Commandments focused, you are bound. But Paul says you've been released from that approach. Not to go into a state of limbo, but you've been released from a law approach in order that you may serve in a new way. And what does Paul say the new way is? He says it's the new way of the Spirit. It's not the old way of the written code and the commandments of the written code, written on tablets of stone. But Paul says you've died to that. In order that you may now operate in a new way, and the new way is in the way of the Spirit. You, we as Christians have to get rid of a, a law mentality and we have to move into a spirit mentality. And Paul goes on into Romans 8 to develop this concept. And so we come into Romans 8. Now I'm moving over to the King James Version now because there are certain things that I think the King James Version brings out better than the NIV does. Paul continues. If you ever read Romans 6, 7 and 8, you'll find that Romans 7 looks at the law mentality and Romans 8 looks at a spirit mentality. And within Romans 7, you have statements like this, and you may have had them quoted to you, you may have even quoted them to yourself. Wretched man that I am, 
who will deliver me from this body of sin? And other phrases are, the very good things I want to do, I don't do, but the very bad things I don't want to do, I end up doing. Who will deliver me from this body of death? And the whole thing about Romans 7, it is is law-focused. And anybody who's law-focused will end up in this situation, the wretched man that I am. But when people quote that, and if people quote it in their own lives, and that's what a a Christian can quote, they're missing the point of what Paul is trying to develop. If you have that mentality of, oh, wretched person that I am, you haven't moved from a law mentality to a spirit mentality. You haven't considered yourself dead to the law and alive to the new way, the way of the spirit. And Paul goes on into Romans 8 to explain. And and the law is powerless to help us do what is right. And that's the big problem with the law. All laws can do is tell you this is what you're supposed to do, but it can't help you keep it. We need a way of operating where we have power to help us to do what the Lord wants. And being focused on the law is never going to do that. Paul writes, for what the law could not do, it can't do it. It can't do anything for us. It can't help us. It can only condemn us. In that it was weak through the flesh, it's our flesh that causes the problem. What the law couldn't do because it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. That is a powerful statement. That is why we consider ourselves dead to sin because through the body of Jesus Christ God condemned sin. Sin has been condemned once and for all. It was condemned 2,000 years ago in the body of Christ in order that we could consider ourselves who are in Christ dead to sin but alive to God in Christ Jesus. That the righteousness of the law might might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. The righteousness of the law is fulfilled in us. The righteousness of the law is not fulfilled by us. The righteousness of the law is fulfilled in us by the work of Christ, by those who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now what I want to highlight is when you read Romans 8, it can be quite a confusing chapter, because Paul talks about the flesh and the spirit. But I just want to give you a pointer this morning as to how you can understand Romans 8 better. And it comes out in the King James Version better because it it all hinges on two words. The word in and the word after. You can see this in the NIV, but the NIV, I think, makes it more obscure. But the King James keeps it very simple. Notice here that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So you can walk after the spirit or you can walk after the flesh. We go into 5 and 8. 5 to 8. For they that are after the flesh to mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnal, carnally minded is death. Now an interesting thing is that the word carnally here is exactly the same word that gets translated flesh. So you can substitute flesh. And I think it makes more sense. For to be fleshly minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. 
because the fleshly mind is enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Now Paul, I think slightly confusingly, tags this in, but I sort of got it around my head, but he, he makes a phrase right. Notice this, um, the important thing to notice in this is that where your mind is focused will determine how your life goes. And this is as a Christian. This isn't as a non-Christian, this is all to Christians. If your mind is focused on the flesh, that's a death state. It's not going to do you any favours. But if your mind is focused on the spirit, it's a life and peace state. Paul in Romans 12 says, don't conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed how? By renewing your mind. By renewing how you think. And Paul here says, tells us what we are to think on. We are not to think on the things of the flesh. We are to think on the things of the spirit. If you think one way, it will do you no favours whatsoever. But if you think another way, it will be life and peace. Uh, it goes on to say, the fleshly mind, the mind set on the flesh, is at enmity with God. And right at the end there, Paul says, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Try and explain I go, if we go into verses, actually we'll stick here for a minute. Notice that I said you have to be careful in this of the words after and in. Here Paul at the bottom talks about those that are in the flesh cannot please God. Previously he's been talking about those who are after the flesh and after the spirit. They that are in the flesh cannot please God. If we go into the next couple of verses, Paul then explains something very specific. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if the Spirit of God dwells in you. So, Paul here is saying, you are in the Spirit if the Spirit of God dwells in you. And if any man does not have the Spirit of Christ, Spirit of God, he is none of his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Now the thing to note, Paul says here, you, the people he is dressing, are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit if the Spirit of God dwells in you. And if the Spirit of God, Spirit of Christ, doesn't dwell in you, then you don't belong to God, you don't belong to Christ. But if the Spirit does dwell in you, then you're a child of God. Now what, the thing I'm trying to get at here is that Christians can be in the Spirit they have to be, we have to be, to be children of God. But, Christians who are in the Spirit, from then on in, can walk after the Spirit, or walk after the flesh. And what determines that is where your mind is set. And to me, this opens up one of the, the ways in which I think if you look at Christians, you will see quite a, a diversity of, of Christian experience. You will see some who really go on with the Lord and you will see Christians whose lives you think, well, they don't seem to go on with the Lord. And the reason is because Paul here says you can be a child of God and the Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ dwell in you and in that puts you into the state of being in the Spirit but as they live their life, 
some Christians walk after the flesh and some Christians walk after the spirit. And we know which way a person is operating according to the way they think. If a person's mind and thinking are set on the spirit, they are led by the spirit and life and peace will operate in their life. But it is totally possible for a Christian to be in the spirit but walk after the flesh, have their mind set on the things of the flesh, their mind set on carnal things. And Paul says here that if you're going to think on those things, they are going to be death to you. The important thing to realise is what Paul is saying here is Walk after the Spirit. Follow the Spirit's leading. Go the way of the Spirit. Have your mind set on the Spirit. Be led by the Spirit. Don't set yourself, don't think on the senses, on the flesh, on the body. Think on the Spirit. And going back to what Paul says earlier, Paul says, you have died to the law, not so that you might be in limbo, but so that you can now serve in a new way of the Spirit. And that is the way the Apostle Paul sees a Christian living. Dead to the law and dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus and serving in a new way by being led by the Spirit. This is something that Paul brings out again and see this in Galatians and he says very similar things. So it's not just restricted to one book. So I say, live by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under law. The whole focus of what Paul is trying to get at is to get believers to a point and a place where they are led by the Holy Spirit. Where they do not focus on law. They do not focus on legalism. They do not focus on the commandments because they are dead to that. The Apostle Paul says where your focus should be, where your mind should be set, should be on the spirit. In a sense, I think it's one of the aspects of the Holy Spirit which is not talked about a great deal. Perhaps it's because it's not understood perhaps as well as it should be. We had the charismatic renewal, the revival and people went balmy for the gifts of the Spirit and all that. But there are other important aspects of the Spirit's work. We know a lot about the Father, we know a lot about the Son, but how much do we know about the Spirit? And yet Paul says here, live by the Spirit. Be led by the Spirit. Paul in Romans says, walk after the Spirit. Paul says, set your mind on the Spirit. That's the way we as Christians are to operate. We are to be Spirit-minded people, not law-minded people. We are to be led by the Spirit, not bound by the law. We are to walk after the Spirit, not walk after the flesh.
can tell from the faces that ooh, confusing, difficult. And I will say at this point that yes, it takes a bit of getting your head round. But all I can say at this point in time is, and I think there's a lot more to be learnt about this particular subject, is that I think if we can get our heads around, and I haven't got my head around this yet, all I've got is a starting point that Paul says you're dead to the law, but you're now to be led by the Spirit. You're now to walk after the Spirit. You're now to walk in step with the Spirit. You're to live by the Spirit. Your whole mindset should be spirit orientated what a powerful work the Holy Spirit must have in this and yet I think we can honestly say this morning we don't know a fraction of what really Paul is talking about and I'm going to have to leave it there because that's all I know <laughs> a little fraction of the fraction he's talking about but I just think that, you know, we've learned a lot about grace over the, uh, over the last uh, number of years. And I think that has radically transformed my life as a Christian. It's a completely different perspective. And I know others in the fellowship have also had that same experience. But I believe there's further to go, much further to go, to get our heads around being led by the Spirit to live by the Spirit, to walk after the Spirit, to have our mind f fixed on the Spirit. Because that's powerful, I think. And I think there's a lot of power in this. And uh, I'll just leave the glazed expressions <laughs> and, and just plant... All I think I can do this morning is just plant things in your mind, little sort of seeds because this really, I don't think, has been brought in the church to the extent it needs to be. And yet, it's fundamental to what the Apostle Paul said. If you look at Romans, Romans 1 to 8 is a whole section, and he develops a whole lot. And as this is in, uh, well, the previous bit was in Romans 8, he's building to that point of being led by the Spirit, of walking after the Spirit there has to be a great deal in that for the successful Christian life, the Christian life of peace and life and energy and fulfilment and many of the things we see in the New Testament I don't think we're experiencing and I think there are things for us to learn and one of the things to learn is this understanding of being led by the Spirit the new law of the spirit of life that Paul talks about. <laughs>